Um, hope everyone is feeling good today. Good to see your faces. We'll just start with our karakia for this morning. E te atua e mihi atu nei mātou ki a koe, ka karanga huki mātou ki a koe, kia whakatongi atu wairu tapu, kei wanganui i o mātou, hei awhena, e o mātou whakaro, e o mātou mahi, e o mātou kōrero i tēnei ata, rōrea ki tō ingo tapu, āmene. Kia ora Debbie, thank you for opening for us, thanks Baruch for holding our space as everyone comes in. Um, morena Koto, great to see everybody on this beautiful Friday morning. So um, it's the end of the week, it's always, it's always nice to celebrate when, it, when you wake up and it's Friday. Um, hoping people journeyed okay this week and that there's some space coming up for you all. Um, this is our, it's not our last time together, but our last time together in this particular form um, and in this particular combination, um, which is just a real privilege. Um, we, we really know how how many other things people have and so to have the space together has been very special. So looking forward to the continuing conversation this morning and then, and then what comes um, beyond that. Um, so I'm just going to pull up some slides for us to just start off with. Gosh, I'm like using a different screen today and I shouldn't try and be tricky with the technology to stick with what works but so here we are landing on our final session of le building learning capacity and um, we've got some more time together with Debbie this morning to build on the quarter that was started yesterday and to think about how um, what we're paying attention to and what we're tracking and and how that kind of shifts what we're what we're thinking about and how we're um, putting emphasis on different things in our processes and our, our way of working either um, right out if people are close to communities or back in the processes and um, spaces that we're holding perhaps more internally in government. Uh, and then some, there's some time also to say, well, what's emerging and what do people want to build on and what would be helpful um, around that? So we kind of use that uh, reflective practice back on ourselves as well. Um, starting how we always like to start, if we can just check in with how everybody's going, how's your walk today? Um, and just have that moment just to land everybody in wherever they are at and they're coming from. So I'll invite um, Baruch, we'll put the Slido link into the chat and we'll just take that minute to um, just check in with how everyone's traveling this morning. Can you guys see the um, word cloud that's on my screen? Cool, okay. Sometimes you can't tell where Zoom's got its focus. Awesome. So as with yesterday, there's a few people that just might need a little help along. If you're in the sessions with them, they just they need a little rest from paddling. So either help them out or just hang out for a little bit. Um, and then lots of people that have got a few um, multiple things going on. So um, a nice, um, diverse balance. And I, I just love the evolution of the language. It'll be really nice to see some of these next to each other, which we might do when we share back. So thanks, everybody, for um, checking in. Um, and we'll come back to this in some form at the end of the session today. So just wanting to pick up on some of the threads that came through from yesterday's conversation before we move into today and also hear from a couple more of our teams about how they've been traveling um, through this journey together. Um, so some of the things just drawing out, there was a lot, there was a lot more quoted all, but um, unpacking this idea of evidence and the assumptions behind it, um, people sort of honing into the the idea of learning practice and what that takes as a discipline. Um, and lots of people talked about it, moving from being an isolated practice to a team practice and kind of recognizing um, that that might be a shift and flexing the muscle, developing the muscle as Sophia talked about it as. And that idea of lifting up and seeing across. So lots of people doing evaluation and even lessons learned, but are they um, looping back in actually to inform what we do next? Or are we kind of lifting up and saying, how do they connect to a broader, um, destination that we might be traveling towards. Also, some people though really celebrating the practice that they were um, doing and being able to share how they'd had successes and how they were drawing that out and working with others to do so. Learning our way into what it means to be treaty partners. So that's part of the journey and people really reflecting on that. And that's actually something that we, we need to figure out as we go. Um, and then quite a few people talking about how do we share 
um, the conversations and things that have come up across this further into our organizations. And so we'd like to come back to that a little bit on the end. So there were lots of other strands and threads, but that's just a few um, to pull out there from yesterday's quarter or across the group. And just a reminder, the, um, the little tool sets that we've um, shared and sent out have a reflection um, set of questions, which is just a start point, but this is what Sophia and her team started just with these kind of questions. And then over time, they've evolved them to kind of um, really fit more specifically to the um, outcomes that they're working with and things like that. But just, it was a very simple start point. And now just having um, the a part that I really love, which is an opportunity to hear um, from some of the teams about your worlds and your perspectives and, and the kind of intersection between that and what we've been talking about here. So I'd just um, love to hand over to Colleen from Doc, Te Papa Atafai, and to share um, what's going on. I'm stopping the wrong thing. Hang on, stop screen sharing. <laughs> and to hear a little bit from your world and your journey. journey. Kia ora, Colleen. Kia ora, Pini. Nā mahi. A mōre nā koutou. Uh, ko tākika te monga, te, ko tākika te awa, um, no Golden Bay ahau. Um, Ingare ke te noho ana ho ki maunga fai. Um, and I know uh, he pakia aho ko te papa ata fai Department of Conservation toko mahi ko Colleen Smith toko ingoa. Lord Aida tina koto katoa. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Um, and na mahi to all the TS, TSI team for um, being so welcoming of us into this training and especially um, Angie for hooking us into this training, really appreciate that. Um, so there's, there's four of us um, on the training from Te Papa Atafai, um, myself, Ho, Hime and Ems. And sometimes we work together um, and sometimes separately, but one of um, the things we work together on is we um, have developed and designed and implemented an internal cultural development program for our internal doc staff. Um, and that was something that came out of um, COVID actually, um, which is really interesting, but has carried on. Um, and when, when we're not doing that, Emi Ho and um, Ems, they work um, with Iwi Mana Whenua and community groups on public conservation land. Um, and my, the main mahi is to work with Fano Hapu and Iwi in South Auckland, supporting their environmental aspirations. Um, yeah, so there's there's been heaps in the training, but um, and hard to pull out the, the key things. But um, a couple of them um, are that that Doc hasn't been a good treaty partner. Um, as an organisation, we haven't been a good treaty partner in the past. Um, but I'm really proud to work at DOC, particularly because in the last couple of years we've owned that as an organisation and our WACA, our organisation WACA has, is um, in, the, in that transition phase now of going in a really different direction. Um, yeah, so there's, there's huge internal, cult, internal and external cultural shifts moving from that transactional space into the transformational space. Um, and a couple of quick examples is that um, recently Hemi Ho and Ems, they designed with Iwi Mana Whenua and community conservation groups a two-day wānanga where um, they really they really looked, unpicked the treaty and what that meant um, through a Te Ao Māori conservation lens. Um, so that was, that's kind of the start of some of the, some of the work. And in my team, um, we've contracted an external um, tangata whenua evaluator to look at our current and previous mahi um, with that te ao Māori lens to look at what were the conditions that created some of the successful system shifts and what were the ones that, what, and what were the barriers. Um, so I really appreciated um, Sophia yesterday because she helped me with um, some language around that. So I really felt like um, our external evaluator has helped us build our um, reflective muscle and um, has helped to synthesize um, our work because we've just been in the detail and haven't been reflecting. He's really um, brought that up. 
Um, yeah, so that's, um, and also just thanks for this opportunity to connect with other agencies and also really appreciated hearing, you know, the lived experiences from, from whānau in, in our communities. Um, yeah, no, it's a nōreira tēnā koutou katoa. Namahi. Colleen, thank you so much. Again, just awesome. Yeah, just I feel really privileged that we have the space where we get to see into each other's worlds in this way just a little bit and for people to speak so honestly and generously about where they're at in their mahi. So thank you again for um, for your sharing and and um, now hand over the rako to Lauren, who's also going to talk to us from her particular perspective um, and team and MSD. Kia ora. Thanks again, Colleen. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, as mentioned, I'm, I'm Lauren from MSD. I'm a part of a team of six uh, that have been on this design journey. Um, that's me, Sam, Edwardine, Catherine, um, and Michelle, and myself. We're part of, um, uh, we're predominantly from safe, strong families and communities within MSD, um, the director there, and we focus on family violence, sexual violence. Uh, we include the social action team, which is the It's Not Okay campaign, and then um, a team that works on building financial capability. Uh, and then we've also got some research and evaluation expertise in there as well. Um, I'm part of a crew that um, runs alongside the subject matter teams, operational policy and planning. So we do a lot of machinery of government. So we're even sort of another step removed to a certain extent. So it's been um, really energizing to um, work with uh, teams that we sit beside, but don't necessarily attend the same team meetings and that, um, which I guess would be one of the most significant benefits from this whole experience is the rich dialogue that uh, we've been able to have in, um, and facilitate through this experience, uh, sitting down, getting around a table um, and you know, catch ups in the kitchen and that sort of thing. It's enabled us to talk about really big ideas, what we'd like to see of the world um, and also acknowledging the reality, which I guess is, um, has been discussed and has been discussed previously. Um, I think we're all um, staring down to a certain extent um, because I think there's a recognition that we're all on a journey and, um, and like uh, I think I'm heartened by the work um, that, yeah, um, I, I guess bearing witness to within MSD, moving um, things like moving from contributory funding to FTE funding, and the work that goes on has gone on um, within the Funner Resilience uh, Program, which has um, involved significant design um, uh, closer to the community level, um, and and some work that we've done um, in the last year around being a bit more community led around the way um, out of the initiatives that we do. Um, and I think um, one of my colleagues put it really um, eloquently and um, in such a crystalline way today. And I think it comes out of it's COVID and social sector commissioning have required us to sort of confront um, or have required have um, raised this idea around high trust relationships. And she said, um, you can't have high trust if you only do and talk high level. And I thought that was such perfection because you do need to. Uh, you really do need to um, deep dive and um, meet people where they stand and see people. Um, and I think the tools that we've been um, gifted through this experience have uh, will enrich those sorts of dialogues. And like for example, for me, um, Tohu have been, has been such a both professionally and personally has been a really intriguing concept to um, land into. Um, and even the seven big things because we've, we've done a lot of we do we focus a lot on strength based. Um, uh, working um, within this space and it's just as one part of the environmental context within which we're working. So it's with uh, extreme gratitude that um, I pass on the thanks from the MSD crew for um, this experience and um, yeah for it being um, part of the slipstream that we seem to be in at the moment. It's been a, a really really rich experience. Thank you. Good Lauren. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's nice to think that we're all journeying together, hey? Like there's lots of there's lots of us that we can wave out to. So I really appreciate um, you taking the time to reflect back and connect into what's happening in your team. And um, we really love this um, the opportunity to create spaces where for, where across government conversations get to happen. So it's really awesome to hear that that's um, that's one of the things that has been fostered because we see that as a really core part of. The opportunity just to create some connecting spaces so thank you again for um sharing and just landing into that space from your team and your mahi um 
so what we'll do now is just um, shift into uh, the pleasure of listening a little bit to um, more of Debbie's portal and connect back into where, where she kind of um, left things for us yesterday afternoon on that journey. Um, and so I'll, I won't put any slides up yes, yet, Debbie, I'll just hand over to you if that's okay. And we'll um, get to learn a little bit more about what Debbie's been thinking and doing and, and what she was going to share with us this morning. So kia ora, it's a, just a pleasure to have you um, again with us, Debbie, and to, to be able to um, yeah, be part of, part of the world of your mahi. So kia ora, thank you. Kia Penny. Thanks, Morena, everyone. Um, I'm in a new office today. This is my actual office, <laughs> very messy at the back. And sorry if you hear my dog barking, I had to lock him in the front room, uh, but he does not like that. So um, if you hear a few barks, that's him. Um, I wanted to pick up from where I um, kind of started yesterday, which was around um, understanding worldviews and what worldviews were coming from, because I think it's an important um, thing to understand and acknowledge from our own, you know, within our own mahi and within our agencies um, and within our roles, I guess your roles within government or wherever role, whatever roles that you play. Um, so, you know, I talked a little bit about my whānau and my two different whānau and how I can see um, growing up in New Zealand that um, actually sometimes the, world, the worlds do not meet, actually. And, and I found this out when I attended university and we did a marae trip and um, about 2% of people had actually been to a marae. I was quite shocked because in my world, I, I, I was, you know, often going to marae tangi hui, but also in, in the mainstream world of, you know, normal mainstream school, etc. I didn't go to kura kaupapa at that stage. Um, and um, in fact, I think the first kura kaupapa in Rātoki was just up the road from me. And that was one of the first kuras that um, were around. But just understanding... Um, that these worldviews are very different. And one of the things I did um, I, that was brought out in my PhD was the concept of epistemological racism um, and understanding actually whose world are we privileging. Um, <clears throat> so that's just a whakaro to step into our um, kōrero today, because when we talk about, say, a kaupapa Māori perspective or a Māori perspective, we're actually talking about a different worldview. Um, <clears throat> so acknowledging that. Um, a good way, actually one of the frameworks that you may be familiar with is Angus's Braided Rivers um, framework, which um, reflects that there's a Te Ao Māori evidence centre <laughs> and a um, Western evidence centre or mainstream or Pākehā um, evidence and programmes that occur and understanding, I know he did a lot of this mahi with um, previous to MSD with the, I think the family and community um, services group um, a while ago and Superu. So if you are familiar with that, it's quite good to have a look at Angus's framework, Braided Rivers, um, just to understand that actually there are these different approaches that we can bring into evidence, um, we can bring into our programs and we can understand it how we might integrate it or how we might um, actually have separate programs going depending on who we're actually um, wanting to serve in, in our programs and services and transformational change process. So um, so I guess um, one of the, the title of my thesis is actually creating space for meaningful evaluation. And um, Hannah, uh, Lauren actually used the word creating space this morning and I thought, oh yes, that's right. So it's also about creating space for that whakaro. So just, um, I really like that term and that's why I used it for the title of my thesis, but let's create space for other whakaro and other worldviews to be implemented within our mahi um, and how can we do that? One of the things, I think we might go to that slide, um, participation matrix. It's something that 
within um, my research, I I developed um, this. Penny, do you mind sharing? Um, I developed a little framework um, which can help us think about when we're co-working or partnering with groups. This was particularly in the co-design context because there's a lot of co-designing going on, um, but it could be in a collaborative context or a partnering context. There's actually levels of co that we could be working at and that people are participating in or not. So this just kind of makes it more transparent about actually if we assess our project or our program or our services, you know, who's actually governing, who's, is it a co-governance arrangement? And now we have examples of that in the environment sector with healthy rivers, et cetera, um, with iwi partnering with the Crown um, or actually council councils. Um, so there's a co-governance arrangement, but is that occurring in our project that we're doing? Um, who's managing, who's, are we co-managing this project? Um, who's defining the problems? And we often um, are not co-defining the problems with um, recipients or with whānau communities with iwi. Um, who's co-designing the process to then find the solution? Are we still co-designing the process ourselves? Are we going, let's use this process of co-design or whatever it may be um, to then get the solution? but could we be actually co-designing that process together? Who's co-designing the actual solutions? Often that's, the, often that's a co-design process that occurs where we might have people participate, have end users, whānau, um, Māori providers, participate in co-designing uh, a solution or a number of solutions, but we have to recognise that that is one piece of of a, you know, a great level of um, project um, involvement here. That's only one piece. Um, and then who's implementing? Are we co-implementing or are, are Māori providers implementing? Are whānau implementing? Um, who's evaluating? Who's deciding on the criteria for evaluation? Um, and this was in, in, the, in relationship to the research. So who's also disseminating and sharing findings and are we doing that together? So that, that is just a little tool that I think could be useful because I just found that we need to be more transparent about those levels. Um, also, we should be transparent about where the end user or the recipient of the program service um, might be involved. Because um, we say co-design and that could be actually with providers, not with whānau. Uh, are whānau involved and where are they involved? Are communities involved and where are they involved? And if that's how it is, that's fine. You have a rationale for that. You know, we can't do co with everybody every time, all the time. So it's just about really being clear with people about where, they're in, where you want them to be involved. Um, and another column of I thought was very useful was actually understanding the power differences. Have we considered the power differences between ourselves as a government agency or project and um, as, the, as the partners or uh, whether they be an iwi or Māori provider or um, a community provider? And do we have power sharing strategies? What, what are they? Um, are we resourcing them? Are we building their capacity to be involved, et cetera? Um, so that was just, I think, a good a reflection that I had on kind of understanding our roles um, in the different levels of things. Um, but yeah, if we move on, Penny, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, this is an example, um, one of the core things I developed in the thesis was with a Māori health provider. Um, kind of in-depth kōrero, and they were involved in both partnering as co-design partners in a research project in Healthier Lives, and they were also involved in facilitating co-design processes with, um, with Council, Auckland Council, and a few other places. Um, so they had quite a 
bit of experience in co-design and, and as I did my research with them and talked with them, um, these core themes came out and we, and I've used them as what, these are Māori perspectives of what good co-design or collaboration looks like. Um, so, so the core, the core of it is the honunga or the connectedness. Um, it's actually creating, that was the important thing to kind of actually start off this co-design process together is that there, what is good co-design is being connected and trust, having those trusting relationships and having really strong bonds, actually building those. And sometimes they're informal, they're built informally as well as you know in the formal setting. But it also requires that the initial engagement with um, the partner or the community is done in a way that you know is respectful and is culturally um, cognizant, basically, of, of their worlds. Um, and often with Māori, that means whakapanaungatanga, mahi, um, kōrero, pōwhiri, whatever that means and wherever you're, you're heading to. Um, Another core element was mahitahi. Um, how do we work together? How are we transparent as partners? Um, what are our shared purposes and values? It's actually kind of working out all of those things together. Um, tikanga kawa is really was really a core concept about um, reflecting the tikanga of the people that you're being involved with. Um, and, and the kawa, so going into their context, it's being, you know, locally, locally um, focused and um, respecting the, their context rather than, you know, I think you guys know that. Um, now, Pukinga was about, actually, it's important to share our expertise and to understand that all partners have expertise, um, but also that there might be some capacity around developing skills and particularly often with the mainstream group or the government or the research program, it's often the skills are in the cultural realm. And I think um, I think one of you shared about that, Colleen, about how the skills were being developed within your program in DOC. And um, that's awesome. And often also there's a need to understand what is working together, what is collaborating and co-design. So, so having that corridor is really important. Um, Nahua is um, about the outcomes. What are the outcomes that are equitable for partners and communities? Um, not just for what we want as outcomes, but what are the outcomes they want? Um, and also this, this is about the process as well. So what are the outcomes of the process that we're doing together? And what are the outcomes of the thing we've designed? <clears throat> and Tino Ranga Tanga of um, was that it's it's a strong a strong um, desire to to have Tino Ranga Tanga as Māori and uh, Māori communities iwi. So how are we supporting that within the process that we're doing? Um, and you know, co-design is is well, working together is about partnership, but for Māori, it's also about um, supporting, you know, self-determination and, and aspirations for Māori um, and what, what their outcomes that they want. Um, so if we move on, so that's just a, a, a little example of a suite of tools that I developed. Um, and, and Penny, if you move to the next slide, this is just an example of, I created a survey and then I created, um, which didn't, you know, not everyone's into surveys, but then I created a workbook around those concepts and it kind of looks like this. So on Honunga, you might ask certain questions and rate them. You can use it as a quantitative tool or you can actually use it as a qualitative, just a or tool we actually sit around and can talk to certain concepts um, or certain questions. Like for example, um, we've got, was the mana of each group respected and enhanced? Um, so this is where you can break down sub criteria within an overall concept. And you might, so you might think about your frameworks and your overall concepts and how, what is important within those concepts 
that you could break down and use as questions, as, court, as items for kōrero and discussion. So yeah, that was just an example of that. Um, if we just move on to an example, another example um, that I've worked with as a developmental evaluator with um, a Māori provider, Māori Whānau Water Collective in Palmerston North called Titihi, Oruahine, um, who are co-designing an app with Toyaria, which is um, Massey University Design School or part of the design school. Um, and this is just an example of what we did together. So the first, the, a good question is just to ask, what does good look like in this particular context? So I asked them, what does good look like in the co-design process that you're, um, you're doing together? You're partnering and you're co-designing with Farno around this. Um, so, um, basically we came up with this framework, we iteratively developed it over time and over Zoom mainly because this was actually done in COVID last year and um, this is still a draft and it's you know something that they can test out or we can test out together um, but as you can see there's um, some key areas that they wanted that kind of came out of that corridor and that was around the Fano. There was criteria related to Fano, criteria related to partners, technical criteria, um, a capacity area for criteria, and also outcomes. So to a kiritanga was kind of their outcome. So about the product and also about where this whole project was leading. So this is just another um, example of how you could start to develop your own criteria in the project by asking what does good look like um, in this project, both with the process and with the outcomes. Um, if you can flip Penny to the next slide, it's just a little bit easier to read. So those were the kind of key criteria and you can develop sub criteria under that. And you can use those in many ways. Um, once you've got your framework, um, you can use those and create questions from them, um, create discussion and call it all um, as well. Um, is that my last slide? So what, what I wanted to finish with um, is like, okay, so we're moving into what, what are we tracking as mainly government agencies and projects that are happening out there? So what does good look like? And often um, in my experience as an evaluator, and I think I heard yesterday as well that it's a lot of it is about internally, looking internally about how we do things better. So what are some of the internal conditions, some of the internal things that we need to be looking at and doing and tracking to create better change, to create greater change for people? Because I keep, I keep hearing the same old story that in 20 years, nothing much is changing, especially for Māori and Pacific peoples. Um, and, and I know it to be true, like these are exa actual examples and um, we need to do something differently. And that's why I'm really passionate about this corridor. Um, so some of the things, you know, what could you track? Could you track, um, are, we, are we creating better, um, connections between the silos within government, for example, because um, silos has always been a real big issue. Um, are we resourcing appropriately? Um, what Are we changing our mindsets within government or within our team? Um, are we creating a shared decision-making space? Um, or how are we, or how well are we? Um, are we building capacity within our team, but also externally within our partners? Um, what systems changes do we need to make and can we track some of those? What relationships are we needing to, what quality of relationship are we making and are we tracking those and how well are we going? So those are just a kind of top of mind things that, um, within the government, I think you can start to think about these things and maybe looking at how 
you might track um, that story um, as well as obviously what's what's happening in the project itself because I think a lot of the barriers are coming from kind of barriers within government that restrict certain things and um, yeah that's just a card or two go into the next um, piece I think that Penny's got you to do. So kia ora everyone, really good to um, share with you this morning. Kia ora Debbie, awesome, thank you so much. Um, yeah, just really awesome to be able to see um, the results of your, your mahi and your PhD work as well and for you to be able to um, talk us through in, in really grounded examples of what um, valuing and working together to develop those um, criteria for success look like and as someone noted I think the um, even if you're not someone who gets excited about tables and things like that although some you know <laughs> depends on depends on what works for you but making visible those things that are often invisible or intangible but where the power actually resides is real it's really powerful the the things that you're bringing forward in your example so thank you so much for your quarter on for sharing um, and yeah we just want to kind of build on those um, invitations and provocations in the, um, the next part of the of the conversation but just drop um, if you have questions or thoughts in the chat just drop them in there and we, we may get an opportunity either today or a bit later to come back um, and talk more with Debbie so do drop things into the chat um, but just to carry on on that invitation from Debbie around what matters and what are we paying attention to um, and some of you may have already done this um, in preparation for this session because there were some questions about this in the pack that went out and some of you may not have so we're just going to do a, um, a sort of thought exercise together if you've got something to draw on um, that would be helpful just to make notes on um, if you don't that's that's fine but if there's a little piece of paper and a pen or something it's just handy to you pull that over and have that in front of you um, for this process and we're just going to step through um, uh, yeah I guess a thought exercise that was in the sets of things. So Debbie just prompted a bunch of questions and, and over the, our time together, we've had quite a few questions, conversations, excuse me, that have raised these things about what's important to pay attention to, what should we be tracking and how does what we um, report on, measure, you know, assess, kind of shape or influence our work. Um, and so, this the middle graphic there was in the pack from last week and it's an activity that just helps you think about well, how how do the things that we track or report on or pay attention to now come to be where did they come from what's their what's their origin so we're just going to go through this as a thought process um, and then have a conversation in your groups about it so i'm, I'm just going to invite you first if you have it to just draw two lines on a piece of paper And then we're just going to step through this kind of thought exercise. If you think about some of the things that you pay attention to or track now, and that's at any level, it doesn't matter. It may be that they're the outcomes you try and produce. They're the things that you ask others to tell you about. They're the things that you're required to pay attention to and account for. Um, or if, if, if it's more internal, as Debbie was suggesting, or Colleen was talking about, what are some of the things internally that you're trying to pay attention to? Just just for the purposes of this, you can use whatever comes first to mind. Some of the things that you might normally be paying attention to, and I'm just gonna put some examples. Um, you know, in a library's context, it's often quite outputs focused and many of our libraries books loaned. Often in our programs, we pay attention to how many people attended. There are some places where we might be looking for, um, you know, did people feel safe and welcome? In some cases, we're just assessing things. In other cases, we might be looking for how people report on capability development or improvement that's just a sort of random set of examples of what you might be um, looking for um, or, or tracking so but in your world what are some of the things that you pay attention to or track and then thinking about well how were they developed and where did they come from and whose whose worldview do they reflect um, whose voices contributed to the things that we're kind of hanging out coat hangers on around reporting and tracking what was the source of those and as Debbie the question Debbie asked who, who's who defined that criteria for good 
and the value systems that are underpin them. And obviously there's a massive question. So it's just a, it's just a light um, invitation to think about this just for a minute. And then the third one is sort of, if we're starting in the middle on what we're doing now, on the left is, well, where did that come from? And then on the right, well, what might it look like if we reshaped those? So thinking about, you know, all the different forms of evidence that were prompted and some of the other tools, whose perspective and stake, um, who has a stake, whose perspective matters? How could um, people be involved either the, the um, either Fano or the different partners that we're working with. What would it look like if if the practice was more the example that Debbie gave, where we were working more collectively to define what we might be working towards? What what might be included in that middle column if we were coming at this from a different perspective or um, were able to spend more time thinking about this in a different way? So it's just a very light kind of step through. And obviously you could spend much more time working as a team through some of these things and unpacking some of this. And, and um, you can, in a minute, go into groups and just have a conversation about what comes up when we think about um, lifting the lid, I guess, on some of our practices and some of our habits and structures around reporting and outcomes and thinking about what we track. Um, but one of the things that... Um, we, we didn't touch on yesterday, but it was strong in the work that um, Sophia um, shared with us is that in the design process, we're often understanding what goes on in the world of people. That's one of the great things about design processes and, and going and doing that sort of early discovery work is that you hear what's important to people and how they see their world through their language. And often we use that to try to then develop, okay, well, what should the solution look like, for example? But that the aspirations and the way people talk about what's important to them are also a value of criteria. So that they're, they're also a really awesome place to find um, what it is that people name is important and to feed into the outcomes and the things that we're working towards collectively. But often we see those things as quite separate. So there's a real integration here between starting kind of at the end and working backwards. Um, so the design process in and of itself is great at surfacing the ways um, different people think about success and what's important to them in, in that language. So I just wanted to make that connection between quite often the outcomes sound like they're far away from the, the thinking about where we're heading and what we're trying to do space. So just taking that um, provocation that we just gave there about what goes on in your world now and where that comes from, We'll go into um, breakout groups and just have a conversation about you know what comes up when you apply that lens um, in your context to what questions get raised and, and just building on the um, things that Debbie shared about different practices and different ways of approaching thinking about value together. So Baruch will do the magic thing and we'll see everyone back in 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, if someone could do the scribing, that would be great. And then we could just hear and um, get a, a few summary points from each groups quarter that would be awesome thank you cool i think we're all back awesome um we'll just take a minute or two to for people to drop some of the summaries from that conversation into the chat it would be awesome if we can just see what came up for people out of that conversation some great summaries coming in there thank you i think there's a couple more to come probably um so debbie's got dogs in the background i've got someone chopping trees down so hopefully that's not too disruptive but um i think when we get into these conversations one of the most um significant significant things from my perspective is how powerful this part of the process is, the, the decision making about what we pay attention to and what matters. But often this is 
something that's quite hidden or habitual in our government processes, the sort of reporting outcome, um, what we do with the data and evidence, we sort of collect a certain amount, we pass it on. There's, there's a lot of, um, not, not always, but in, 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 in many cases, there's a sort of pattern of working that doesn't have a very critical lens across it. But actually when we start to kind of open it up and think about its potential for intervention and how it is either reinforcing or rebalancing or enhancing or compounding this, this area that, about what we're, what we're tracking and how we're naming things is actually one of the most significant places to start to think about um, change and creating spaces. So this is definitely a, a focus area for us and really um, interested in exploring with teams um, where there's space to get movement and where people are seeing that they can start to, to really pay attention to this space as a condition setting part of the work we do in government for how we're actually setting people up to work well. So some awesome reflections in there. When you get a chance, jump into the chat and you can have a um, look at what other teams were talking about and what they've taken from this, what we'll do now. So if you wanna take a minute to read that, you can but we'll just have a 10 minute break at this point to just give us some space for the last um, block of time that we have together this morning. So it's 10.33, so we'll convene back here at 10.43, which hopefully is just enough time to get and do what you need and we'll see you again shortly. Thank you very much, Kilda. Cool. I think everyone's coming back on now. Welcome back. Thanks everyone for your reflections and sharing. Really cool to see the different um, ways people are unpacking things in their context and just wanting to emphasize that um, in the work that, that we're doing, um, it's really clear uh, when we think about needing to start and different places and not keeping on repeating the patterns that are the status quo now, if we're sort of working in the same ways that we have been, we, we're not gonna get different outcomes. It's pretty, pretty clear. Um, so the ways of working, the patterns of working do need to look different. We need to start in different places. And some of the things just coming back to Angie's quarter about the, uh, at the beginning around the tikanga led practice already starts in different places from from where some of our standard um, kind of service methodologies begin. And when you talk with whānau about where they want to start, their start points are places like aroha, um, manakitanga. They're not, oh, here's a problem, I'm in a fix. The, those are, sm they're, they're small and big at the same time. Um, but just when we're working alongside teams and trying to understand, well, what's holding the status quo in place, those patterns go all the way through up and down um, and right across. So wherever we are sitting and whatever our um, place is in it, um, we can be thinking about the conditions that we're helping to create for different ways of working. So I know for some people, there was some reflections around the difference between working close to community versus being close to government, but the patterns of things like how we contract, how we commission, how we evaluate, how we share data about people, how we talk about um, people, the language we use, the way we construct budget bids, all of those things embed particular sets of values. So I think um, people should, uh, well, I, we, we hope that um, the conversations are transferable to different, different places and different perspectives, even if some of the examples have been particularly um, feet on the ground with communities. So what we'd love to do now is kind of take on board some of the reflective practice and evaluative thinking that Debbie's shared with us and also Sophia's shared with us um, and just apply that to our own context together. Uh, people have been really generous in sharing their thoughts and feedback and kind of the growing collective conversations that people have been having, which has been really great um, just to, to understand um, what's, what's showing up for people when we have these conversations and how they connect into your worlds. But we just want to spend a bit more time unpacking that now in terms of we've, we've had seven, seven, I don't know how many hours, maybe it's 15, 16 hours together um, over the last seven weeks. And just to understand what, what's been useful um, and, and how we're feeling about this kind of conversation around the capacity to hold some of the complexity, to be big and small at the same time. Um, 
And I have to be honest, often that does mean that it feels like we're doing two jobs, right? <laughs> You're doing the job that's the fast one and the, and the holding the big one. And um, I'm not sure how, any, how maybe other people are managing to do it, but it does feel like you're doing at least two things at once. And I know some of you feel like you're doing at least five things at once because there's a whole lot of other potai as well. Um, so we just want to check into that people's experience around that together and have some conversations too about how people um, would like to take some of these things forward as well. So applying that kind of, you know, we did these things, so what, what next sort of loop um, of evaluative thinking. I'm just going to talk us through, just to remind us what we did do. Um, we first landed um, into the conversation and we were able to connect with each other. And it was really awesome that some of you turned out to be for knowing her and there was all sorts of cool connections across the place. Um, and we started this with this idea of, you know, what are the foundations? What does it mean to step back from this, the doing and think about actually, well, how are we doing it? And what are we holding, you know, from the bigger picture of that? We, we had the joy of um, Roy Mata um, kind of welcoming us in and the corridor around Hotu Waka and the journey of that, which has helped kind of thread us all the way through, um, if you like. Uh, we heard um, the experiences of her whanau, whanau o Papakura and, and Angie's um, tikanga-led practice, seven things that matter was a way for us to anchor and tukona te rāki's Māori future making awesome corridor, which, which took us into um, lots of different dimensions of our practice as well as their practice. And then um, time again with Roy Mata around that transaction to transformation and placemaking with Desna um, and the Na'aho na practice. And then, whoops, too fast. And then um, landing in this week's session around, well, what, are we, what, is, what does this mean for how we work and what we're paying attention to then if, if, if these are the things that we're trying to prioritize and privilege and that we have to hold in mind. Um, and Debbie, sharing her um, Fetu evaluation framework and, and some ways to make visible actually the things that make the difference, but that tend to get kind of um, left out of some of our more standard or toiwi pakiao um, constructs around what we're tracking and paying attention to. So that, we managed to pack quite a bit into those uh, 16, 17 hours, what it was, it feels like. Um, and there were different things that people have tapped into as useful and hopefully you can revisit some of the tools and materials as they become relevant to you over time and we'll, we'll send out it all kind of in one package as well. But just coming back then to why we cr created this particular um, foundations program and the conversation we were trying to hope to hold, um, which obviously wasn't a how to do design five steps kind of tools and, and those are useful and there, there are other versions of those, but we wanted to try and hold a different kind of conversation um, about our readiness to do the work and to do design work, but other work that connects to the bigger concepts of, of equity and intergenerational well-being and what it actually means to take those things on and into our spaces. And I, um, I think what, what we've, we've oscillated through um, the whole time is that it's different mindsets and skill sets and, and what our friend Ingrid from Australia calls heart sets. Um, it's definitely that, it's definitely us building practice to hold the different things and work in different ways, but it's also shifts in, inside institutions and, and how we're working at that institutional level and organizational level and prioritizing and celebrating different things. And, and some of the things we, we've seen people name and say, you know, this is what we've started to do and, and, and we can celebrate those kind of pathways where people are learning their way into different practice. So. Just to kind of come full circle then, there was this um, foundational wheel or star that we put up at the beginning and said, this is almost our context, right? And these are five really big ideas. Um, and we've touched on them in little ways all through those times, but I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know, but I made like when we first put this up, it's a lot, right? You're like, oh, it's so many things. How do we possibly hold all this stuff? And that's each of these could be their own um, PhD or, or degree or something. Um, my hope is that um, we've, well, our first question was how well are we set up to engage with these in our work? Like this is the, this is the bigger context of the mahi around equity and well-being. We know that the shape of our work looks much tighter than this, but how do we work in ways that, allow us to hold this where we can, but keep keep moving forward. So that was our question. And I, um, I'm i assuming, you know, it felt really big and I'm hoping it feels slightly, 
doesn't feel any less big, but it feels like there's some handholds potentially, or there's some, you know, we've kind of, we've surfaced some things, we've explored some things, we've hooked onto some things, we've actually seen, um, well, what might it mean to explore at a bit more of a systems level? What does a learning practice look like? Actually, how is equity held in some of our places and spaces in big and small ways, toilet toilet doors or contracts. Um, so our hope is that we've shifted to some extent from going, well, that's massive. And, and maybe we don't really hold that stuff very well in our practice to, yeah, it's still massive, but the, there is, there's some more familiarity with how these things are showing up and some um, ways, entrances and start points that people have started to weave already into their work to have this kind of be more conscious. So the invitation is just to consider um, what's, um, what's emerging about our role in helping our organizations to grapple with these things. So through the conversations we've had and the things we've done together, that this stuff becomes slightly less overwhelming or, or overwhelming only half the week or a quarter of the week. So I'm just gonna stop for a minute and just hold that because I just want to use this as a time to go, okay, wh where we started, how you felt about some of this stuff when we started and where we are now and the help that each, um, that each of you is giving to each other when you go into those conversations and just connect about what's going on and this, even just to start making sense of these things, not in any way solving or resolving or um, kind of packaging them up. So I'm just gonna stop for a second and just hold that thought about what's emerging for our role in helping our organizations engage with this in our mahi. You might make some notes if you want to, but you can just kind of sit with that. Cool. So hopefully just in that window, there was just a time to do a little bit of catching up from where you started to where you are and just thinking about that journey. As always, there's just more questions, not answers, but we start asking better questions. Um, that's kind of what starts to happen or questions that get us to different places, right? So now we would ask that you take the time to capture some of this for us. It's, it's really important both as a way of processing and kind of making sense for yourselves um, to be able to capture um, things and write things down. And of course, it's really important for us to understand what's been useful, what hasn't, um, and what, what ways we can help platform these conversations in different parts of government too. So what we're gonna ask you to do next is um, to take about at least five minutes, maybe a few more minutes. So don't feel like you have to rush to answer the questions, but we're gonna put in Slido two questions that we'd like you to just take a little bit of time to write some answers to. So we've been on this journey together. Um, what's kind of been added or have you been able to take on board or you know, um, put to your preparation of your waka over this time together? So what things have kind of been able to help strengthen your waka or you've got more people in it or you've got some more things in your kite? Um, as you've come over this journey. And there's some prompts in the slide about the kinds of things that might be. It might be tools, it might be insights, it might be connections, it might be just different ways of thinking about stuff. And then the second question is around sharing and people have brought this up already. And so we're interested in what that looks like for different teams about what is it that you wanna spread within your organizations and, and what might be most useful to help do that. So just two different questions for you to reflect on and share back to us. Um, and the link whoops, will be in the Slido for those two questions. And we'll, Brooke will put some music on. We'll have at least five minutes. So just take the time to think about it and, and just capture some responses with some examples if you can. Thank you. 
cool. So we've got 26. So there's still a few more people either typing or um, meditating. Is that the right word? No, processing. Um, so if you need more time and you just want to send us in some thoughts because that works better for you, then just that's totally fine. But really keen to get your thoughts and feedback and understand more about how these things are showing up in your worlds that we can support. So kia ora whanau. if you're ready to hit submit, if you haven't already, and like I say, feel free to give us feedback through other forms as well, and we'll, we will definitely be in touch with the teams. But just now wanting to um, hand over to Baruch, who, who is sort of holding the what comes next um, conversation and wanting to support um, hearing from you folks about that. So I'll just hand back to Baruch now. Good Penny. Um, so when we first signed up many, many moons ago, there was also a comment uh, slightly underneath about continuing conversations. So this is the bulk of the course, so to speak, that we are doing continuing conversations one every month over August, September, October, November. So four more conversations. So those ones would be a lot, again, still for two hours, still on a Friday morning, but those would be a lot less content heavy, so to speak, and it'd be a lot of us connecting and reflecting and talking about our work and sort of bringing that back and talking to each other, reconnecting. So as we go um, into that space, um, as you go into breakout, I'd like you to think about what you want to talk about at these conversations. That's right, Penny, Friday mornings, because Fridays are the best, so. <laughs> yep, so what do you, what would you like um, to talk about? What would you like to hear, see, or discuss? What questions are you sitting with? And so that'll help us shape that, those up a little bit. Uh, these conversations, again, they're not in the calendars yet, but I will, by Monday morning, by Monday, send you the other calendar invites as well. They're completely optional. And again, there are space for reflection and thinking. That's about enough of that, I Penny. So I uh, will send you into the breakout rooms and have a chat about what would you like to see here or discuss in the continuing conversations and what questions are you still sitting with? Hold up. Okay. Let's see if I can pull this off. Yes. Thank you, Fana. So if um, you could put your notes in the in the chat box. I'm forgetting my words now. If you could put your notes in the chat box, that'd be great. Thank you. Then pass it back to Penny. Say to that. Shut up, Barack. Yeah, I'll just give her a minute if you can um, let us know what came from that conversation about what what you're still sitting with and what you'd like to take forward into continuing conversations that would be awesome some very excellently skilled note takers in this group i have to say mm -hmm. thank you so much yeah. makes it much easier so kilda um so people might drop that in and i'm just i'm going to um to just wrap up with a couple of things and then um um we're lucky to have roy mata um helping us transfer out of this part of the journey in the same way that she helped um, invite us and transfer us into it. So I'll, I'll just share a couple of things and then I'm gonna hand over to Roy Mata. Um, awesome, okay, I have to do the screen thing. Wow. Okay. So just just a couple of kind of thoughts at the end. Firstly, I just really want to mihi to Baruch and Lee who are in the background. This is one of my favorite photos from the whole program. We had this at the very, very beginning session as the welcome and they used it to help set up stuff, but um, they're just in the background doing all the magic and stitching the technologies together and making sure that, I mean, we don't, we definitely don't get it perfect, but helping the things kind of fit together. So I just really want to acknowledge and say thank you so much to their um, input and support and leadership in the, how you hold spaces um, online because it's yeah this is all definitely something that we're still learning about how to create and have these kind of conversations together so just yeah wanting to um, very much thank the team um, and just so everyone know that we will package things up and share the resources with you and and, and we'll be getting in touch also to get feedback and it's important for us to share with our 
um, the groups that support the lab and make these spaces possible, you know, what's come out of it and what's been important and useful for people. So um, it's great for us to be able to give that feedback. Um, and, and the reason why we try and create the space um, as, as freely accessible is to try and reduce any barriers to people being able to participate. So it's great for us then to be able to kind of share back what this is, this is how people have experienced it and um, the difference that it's made. Um, one of the things I just want to end on and kind of close on, um, in addition to uh, all the awesome stuff that Debbie shared with us this morning, and it just connects into this, and this has come up lots of times, but that, um, and it particularly came up yesterday, actually, that the small but significant things that we can all do in our own sphere of influence. So just really wanting to hold on to that as our, um, not, not, not in a burdensome way, but in a, um, in a way that you can, we can just step back into this when we want to, when we do feel overwhelmed, that actually there's opportunities through all the things um, that we do uh, to model and, um, and to learn about what that means around the rebalancing behaviours and ways of working and being that we would like to see more broadly embedded across the system, but that our capacity to do that and that that can show up in lots of different ways. So it might be through the language that we use, the way we frame things, through what we choose to value and track, like what Debbie talked about today, the kind of questions that we ask each other, um, the ways we choose to share power, big and small, through how we act and through how we practice manakitanga. So there's, I'm sure there's many more, but just small expressions that, that can really um, create spaces, I think someone was talking about before. So I just really want to kind of have that as the leaving thought um, on, on, I've got no idea what comes after this. Oh yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> And just once again, to say how much we appreciate um, the opportunity to spend this time together. And that although it would be amazing to be in the same room, we would never be able to do this if we were in the same room. So just how cool too, that we can take the opportunity to connect across places and spaces and agencies and people. Um, and people can be wherever they are in the, um, the whenua and Aotearoa at the moment. So if you get the time to look out the window again today in the same way that we started, some of you have got a beautiful view right beside your desk, which is awesome. So I hope you get to take the time to connect back in um, to the space that you're in. Just say a massive mahi and thank you to, um, to all our learning partners that come have come along and give their um, just really powerful whakaaro and kōrero around their work and their worlds and their ways of seeing that um, it's just such a privilege to be able to um, listen to um, and learn from. So thank you, particularly today, Debbie, but all the others that have joined us. Um, yeah, and to everyone here that's giving their time, your openness, your generosity, bravery, probably had no idea what you're getting into when you signed up for it or someone signed you up for it. So appreciate, um, appreciate that. Um, and on that note, I'm going to hand over to Roy Mata, who just who beautifully opened for us um, all those weeks ago and kind of welcomed us in um, and provided us with threads and thoughts to hang on to. And she's going to um, really gracefully help us to close um, this particular part of our journey together as well. So I'm going to stop sharing and if I can figure out how to do that. Um, and also stop talking uh, and just hand over to Roy Mata. Kia ora, Roy. Tēnā tātou. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come back. Please excuse my camera. It's a little bit iffy at the moment. I just wanted to um, take the opportunity to call on the four winds. So we'll bring on ngā, ngā hauewha and then I'll close us off with a karakia. Okay? If you know this, please sing it. Um, I'm going to sing it. Whakataka te hau ki te uru Whakataka te hau ki te tonga Kia makina ki na ki uta Kia makara tara ki Ehi a ke ana te atakura He tio He huka He hauhu Si hei mauri 
Nam hikia kote katoa.